Hi guys. After a very long and tedious chapter 10, you've done a great job finishing. We are moving right along to chapter 9, section 1, and we will be studying the origins of progressivism. The progressive movement was aimed to restore economic opportunities and correct injustices in American life. Even though reformers never completely agreed on the problems or the solutions, each of their progressive efforts shared at least one of the following goals. Protecting social wel welfare, promoting moral improvement, creating economic reform, and fostering efficiency or promoting the growth of efficiency. The main goal of social welfare reforms was to soften the harsh conditions of the industries. Groups such as the YMCA and the Salvation Army offered shelter, food, and classes to educate the poor and the homeless. In addition, many women were inspired by the settlement houses to take action. Florence Kelly, as pictured in your screen, became an advocate for improving the lives of women and children. She was appointed Chief Inspector of Factories for Illinois after she helped to win the passage of the Illinois Factory Act in 1893. Promoting moral improvement. Other reformers felt that morality, not the workplace, held the key to improving the lives of poor people. These reformers wanted immigrants and poor city dwellers to uplift themselves by improving their personal behavior. Prohibition, which is the banning of alcoholic beverages, was one of the main programs because many members of prohibitionist groups feared alcohol was undermining American morals. Carrie Nation is an example, and she worked for prohibition by walking into saloons, scolding all of the customers, and using her hatchet to destroy any alcohol bottles in sight. As moral reformers sought to change individual behavior, a severe economic panic in 1893 prompted some Americans to question the capitalist system. As a result, some Americans, especially workers, embraced socialism. Socialism often refers to the favoring of big businesses from the government and thus results in a lack of competition. Journalists who wrote about instances like these the corrupt side of business and the public life in mass circulation. Magazines during the early 20th century were known as the muckrakers. Many progressive leaders put their faith in experts and scientific principles to make society and the workplace more efficient. In high hopes of doing this, industry reformers applied scientific management to the workplace. It reduced the tasks that each worker was required to do and put in more steps in the creation of a product. However, not all workers could work at the same rate, and although the introduction of the assembly lines did speed up production, the system required the people to work like machines. Uh, this caused a high worker turnover and often created many injuries uh, because of the fatigue the workers would experience. In attempt to avoid things like this happening to the workers, Henry Ford, a major player in the economic market at this time, he used the practice and lowered the workday in his factory to eight hours and paid his workers five dollars a day, which at this time was pretty good. As we have discussed, the new industrial age America was experiencing brought a wide variety of problems throughout the entire country, and most could be brought back to in, or related to the need of reforming local government. Mayors concentrated on economics, tax structure, public transportation, worked to get rid of corruption, and set up a system to, of work relief for the unemployed. Local reforms coincided with progressive efforts at the state level as well. Governors worked to pass laws regulating railroads, mines, mills, telephone companies, and other huge businesses. Also at this time, educated women, among many other groups, began to get involved with the temperance and child labor movement. Businesses hired children because they performed unskilled jobs for low wages. Immigrants and rural, rural migrants often sent their children to work because they viewed them as part of the family economy. 
both this and the long work hours resulted in many accidents causing injuries such as loss of limbs and sometimes even death. Among these needed reforms was also the reform of elections. This led to the recall, which enabled voters to remove public officials. It also added an initiative, which was a bill originated by the people rather than lawmakers on the ballot, and a referendum, a vote on the initiative. The success of the direct primary also paved the way for the 17th Amendment, which was the direct election of senators. Government reform, including efforts to give Americans more of a voice in electing their legislators and creating laws, drew increased members of women into public life. It also formed renewed, atten renewed attention on the issue of women's suffrage, which is a perfect segue into our next section, Women in Public Life. All right, section two. Before the progressive era, mid married middle-class women were generally expected to devote their time and their lives to the care of their homes and families. As a result of the social and economic change, many women began to enter the workforce as workers and reformers. Poor women especially used this and had no choice but to work for wages outside the home. It's extremely important for you guys to know how significant this was in American life. By 1890, women outnumbered men in reaching high school graduation. The roles of women were drastically changing from less feminine to more independent ways of living. Like what we just learned in section one, dangerous conditions, low wages, the long work hours, led to many female industrial workers to push for ways to change each of these issues and more. In 1896, African American women founded the National Association of Colored Women, or NACW. Another reform group was NAWSA, also known as the National American Women's Suffrage Association. Three years later, after the Seneca Falls Convention of 1848, women split over the 14th and 15th Amendments, which granted equal rights, including the right to vote, to African American men, but continued to exclude women. Keep in mind, America at this time is still very racially unsound. Many women did not understand how African American men could have the right to vote, and they could not. This outraged women and only furthered the constant opposition women's suffrage faced. The liquor industry feared that women would vote in support of prohibition, while the textile industry worried that women would vote for restrictions on child labor. Other men simply feared the changing role of women in society. Suffragist leaders tried three approaches to achieve their objective. First, they tried to convince state legislators to grant women the right to vote. Second, women pursued court cases to test the 14th Amendment and declare women are citizens just like men are. And last, women pushed for a national constitutional amendment to grant women the right to vote. Before the turn of the century, the campaign for suffrage achieved only moderate success. And I will be picking up right there next time.